another video in the chemical bonding discussion series. In this video, we'll talk about Lewis structures in detail, such as the structures for molecules with more than one central atom or for molecules with multiple bonds. So we have discussed previously in general chemistry one of different types of formula. And one of those formula would be the molecular formula. When we say molecular formula, it shows us the number and identify all the atoms in the compound. However, it does not show which atoms are bonded to each other. That's why we can use the Lewis structures to illustrate the connectivity between atoms as well as the location of all bonding and non-bonding valence electrons. So Lewis structures are, remember, uh, electron dot structures for molecules and they show the location of the valence electrons of the atoms in the compound. As you can see here, we have here the Lewis structures for methane, ammonia, and water. And then, um, there are different steps on how we can draw the Lewis structures of molecules. So we will discuss it one by one using different examples. So for our first example, we have nitrogen trifluoride. So in nitrogen trifluoride, we have the molecular formula NF3. And then we have to determine first the electronegativity values so that we can determine which atom will be placed in the center. So in this case, uh, in nitrogen trifluoride, nitrogen has a lower electronegativity value, so it will be placed in the center. So our atom placement will now look like this. Then we have to determine the total number of the valence electrons. So if we look at uh, our molecular formula, it has one atom of nitrogen. We multiply it by the valence electron of nitrogen, which is 5. So it will give a total of 5 electrons. While for fluorine, if we look at our molecular formula, we have 3 atoms. We multiply it again by its respective valence electron. So 3 times 7, it will give us a total of 21 electrons. And then if, if we add the electrons of nitrogen and fluorine, we will arrive at a total of 26. After that, we'll draw a single bond from each surrounding atom to the central atom. And we have to subtract 2 electrons for each bond from the total number of valence electrons. So in this example, we have to subtract 6 from 26 since we already used 3 bonds which represents 6 electrons. Now, 26 minus 6, we only have 20 remaining electrons. Then, we'll distribute the remaining electrons in pairs so that each atom ends up with 8 electrons or to satisfy the octet rule. So first, we place the lone pairs on the surrounding atoms to give each an octet. And if any electrons remain, place, uh, remain, place them around the central atom. In this example, we give each fluorine atom 3 lone pairs so that it will satisfy the octet rule. So we have 2, 4, 6, and then 8. So we have already used up 18 electrons in total for the surrounding fluorine atoms. And then if we subtract it from 20, we will still have 2 remaining atoms, which we will place on the central atom. For our next example, we have to write a Lewis structure for CCL2F2 one of the compounds responsible for the depletion of stratospheric ozone. So since carbon has the lowest electronegativity, uh, electronegativity value, it is the central atom. And then the other atoms are placed around it. So it will go like this. Don't worry, the halogen atoms that surround it, uh, there is no specific position for that. So if we look at the total number of valence electrons, if we add all of them up, we have 32 valence electrons. Then, we have to draw the single bond first to the central atom and subtract 2 electrons for each bond. So, from 32, we will subtract 8 electrons since we used up 4 uh, bonds representing 8 electrons. So, we have 24 electrons remaining. Now, 
we distribute the 24 remaining electrons in pairs beginning with the surrounding atoms so that each atom will have an octet. So each surrounding fluorine and chlorine atom gets three pairs to have an octet of electrons. So the remaining 24 electrons have been used up already. And then for our next example, we have to write the Lewis structure for methanol. So the molecular formula would be CH4O, an important industrial alcohol that is being used as a gasoline alternative in car engines. Again, we place the atoms relative to each other. So hydrogen can only form one bond. So carbon and oxygen must be central and adjacent to each other. So carbon has four bonds and oxygen has two. So we arrange the hydrogen atoms accordingly. And we determine the sum of the valence electron, which we will arrive at 14 valence electrons. And then after that, we add the single bonds and subtract two electrons for each bond. So we still have four electrons. So you have here the single bonds that, that were added that will represent two electrons. Then, since we still have four electrons remaining, we add the remaining four electrons in pairs to fill each valence level. As you can see here, carbon already has an octet and each hydrogen shares two electrons with carbon. So the remaining four electrons form two lone pairs on oxygen to give the Lewis structure for methanol. So if you count the electrons surrounding oxygen, you have 2, 4, 6, 8. So it will satisfy the octet rule. So there are some cases that, that if there are not enough electrons for the central atom to attain an octet, a multiple bond is present. So in most of these cases, we have an additional step wherein if the central atom does not have a full octet, we have to change a lone pair on a surrounding atom with another bonding pair, the central atom, which will now form a double bond. So there are cases that this would be, uh, this should be done again if necessary to form a triple bond or to form another double bond. So we can have some examples. So write the Lewis structures of ethylene which is the most important reactant in the manufacture of polymers and nitrogen, the most abundant atmospheric gas. Again, we still have to follow the four steps that we have discussed earlier and we'll arrive at this structure. So we have here this structure for ethylene. So we change now the lone pair to the bonding pair and then the right carbon has an octet, but the left carbon has only six electrons. So we change this lone pair on the right carbon to another bonding pair between the two carbon atoms to give each carbon an octet. Now for nitrogen, it has a total number of valence electrons. And if we distribute the remaining valence electrons, after forming single bonds, each nitrogen atom does not attain octet. However, if we change a lone pair to a bonding pair, in this case, moving one lone pair to make a double bond still does not give both nitrogen atoms an octet. So if we move a second lone pair to make a triple bond, it will now satisfy the octet rule. So you have your two, four, six, and eight. So eight valence electron for each nitrogen atom. Then uh, the octet rule actually applies to most molecules with period two central atoms, but not everyone and not too many with central atoms from period three and higher. So there are three important exceptions for molecules. The first one would be the molecules with electron deficient atoms. So in gaseous molecules containing either beryllium or boron as the central atom, the atom is often electron deficient. So it has fewer than eight electrons surrounding it or around it, an incomplete octet as we call it. The Lewis structures 
with formal charges of gaseous beryllium chloride and boron difluoride look like this one. So there are only four electrons around beryllium and only six around boron. Surrounding halogen atoms don't form multiple bonds to the central atoms to give them an octet because of the halogens are much more electronegative than either beryllium or boron. And then, the other exception would be the odd electron species. So, a few, molecule contain, a few molecules contain a central atom with an odd number of valence electrons. So, they cannot have all their electrons in pairs. Most of these molecules have a central atom for, from an odd numbered group such as nitrogen. So, they are called free radicals. They are the species that contain a lone or unpaired electron which make them paramagnetic and extremely reactive. And then, the other exception for the octet rule would be expanded valence shell. So, many molecules have more than 8 valence electrons around the central atom. So, that atom expands in its valence shell to form more bonds which releases energy. So the central atom must have must be large and have empty orbitals that can hold additional pairs. Therefore, expand, expanded valence shells occur only with non-metals from period 3 or higher because they have d orbitals available. Such a central atom may be bonded to more than 4 atoms or to 4 or fewer. So an expanded valence shell again is only possible for non-metals from period 3 or higher. So, example of these elements would be phosphorus and sulfur. So, for our, our sample problem, we have to write a Lew the Lewis structure and identify the octet rule exception for SCLF5 and H3PO4 and BFCL2. So, for our plan, we have to draw each Lewis structure and examine it for exception to the octet rule. Period 3 elements can have an expanded octet, while boron commonly forms electron-deficient species. So, what are we going to do? For letter A, of course, the central atom is sulfur, which is in period 3 and can have an expanded valence shell. And then for phosphoric acid, it has two resonance forms and, will the, and the formal charges will indicate the more important form. But in this uh, example, we will just be determining uh, the octet rule exception. So for H3PO4, the octet rule exception would be the expanded valence shell. While in BFCL2, it is an electron deficient molecule because boron has only six electrons surrounding it and uh, the halogens cannot form double bonds with boron and that's it for this um, video of chemical bonding particularly the lewis structures thank you for listening